Okay, so today we're going to be talking about equilibrium expressions. Now, equilibrium expressions, they're based off equilibrium. Um, so when a reaction you know, that goes both in the forward direction and in the reverse direction, when those are equal, we're at equilibrium. And at that point, we can, ha we can find this constant in which the amount of products goes on top versus the amount of reactants goes on the bottom. So this constant, it, re it remains constant. So once we're at equilibrium, the amount, the ratio of our products over our reactants remains constant at a given, new, uh, given temperature. Um, now I think in the work, in your video number seven, I think this is actually a Y instead of a uh, C, and this is a Z. Um, this is a X, and this is a W. Sorry, I don't have my notepad today, so my writing might not be the cleanest. But. Okay, so our coefficients out here, if we had like two moles, two moles of H2, then our C would actually be the concentration of H2, and then this coefficient out here, 2, would now become our exponent. So it's important to remember that our coefficients, or the amount of moles in our balanced equation, is going to become our exponents or our concentrations. Um, so basically, what I really want you to know, though, is that um, the uh, our k equilibrium constant, our expression, is always going to be the concentration of our products over the concentration of our reactants. In case you don't know, this symbol right here stands for concentration or molarity. So, when we have more products than reactants, we're going to have a value of KEQ that is bigger than 1. And when our value of K is bigger than 1, it means that this value, when we, this value and this value are big, whereas this value is small. So then, our KEQ is going to be some number bigger than 1. And that means that we're going to have more products compared to reactants. So that means that the forward reaction is favored. And there's going to be more products than reactants. It's the exact opposite if our KAQ is less than 1. Then we're going to have a number that is um, oops. We're going to have a number that is let me finish doing this here. we had a KUQ that was um, less than one, then we're going to have less react or less products than we would reactants. We'd have more reactants, less products. That means that the reverse direction is favored. Okay, so let's practice writing our equilibrium expressions. So the very first one, our K, EQ, sorry again, I got my notepad, not the cleanest. It's always going to be the concentration of our products over our reactants. So products, ammonium, and we have to remember our coefficients now become our exponents. So this becomes squared. We go over here. Here is H2. This becomes cubed. And then a concentration of nitrogen. So here is our KAQ value, our KAQ expression. Now, if I told you that the concentration of nitrogen was one molar, and I told the concentration of hydrogen was two molar, and if I told you the concentration of 
nitrogen was 3 molar, we would actually plug those in. So 3 molar would go into where nitrogen is. And we'd have to square that. And H2 would be 2 molar. And we'd have to cube that. And this would be 1. And then if we ended up actually pulling these calculators, we'd have 3 squared. So that'd be 9 divided by 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. So our KQ value would be 9 divided by 8. Now, on the next one, our value is going to be our next KQ. How about you guys practice doing this yourself, and then let me know what you got. All right, actually, pause it and then come back to it and see if you did it right. So this one is going to be H2O squared divided by H2 squared O2 to the 1. Now, again, if I told you the concentration of it right here was 1 molar, I told you this one was 1 molar. And if I told you this one was 2 molar, we could actually plug those in to find our KQ value. So our KQ value would be 2 squared divided by 1 squared times 1, or a total of 4. 